In this problem, we're going to solve this quadratic equation by completing the square. Solution. So the first thing you want to do when you're completing the square is get all the x's on one side by themselves. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. So plus 1 plus 1. So we have 8x squared minus 8x equals 1. Now we have to make sure that the coefficient of x squared, that's the number in front of x squared, is a 1. So we have to divide everything by 8 in this case. So these cancel, so we get x squared minus x equals 1 over 8. Now comes the tricky part. We have to complete the square. So we always take the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x. In this case, it's negative 1. We divide it by 2, and then we square it. When you square the negative 1, you get 1. When you square the 2, you get 4. So always take the number in front of the x, divide it by 2, and square it. And then we add that to both sides. x squared minus x plus 1 fourth. Then over here, same thing, 1 eighth plus 1 fourth. Okay, so now we have to add these fractions. So how do you do that? Well, one way to do it would be to find what's called a common denominator. So you want to make this bottom piece, the denominator, an 8. So it's missing a 2. So you multiply by 2 over 2. So that becomes 1 over 8 plus 2 over 8. And that ends up being 3 over 8, because 1 plus 2 is 3. So we can rewrite this. x squared minus x plus 1 fourth equals 3 over 8. Okay, now the left-hand side is called a perfect square trinomial. The whole point of completing the square is that you can factor this without thinking about it. Basically, you put a parenthesis, you put an x, you put a parenthesis, and you put a 2. So there's no thought in terms of like, oh, how does this factor? You just write this down, and then you take the number here, and you divide it by 2. So 1 over 2, and then you keep the sign. And this is equal to 3 over 8. So you always just take this number and then divide it by 2. To get rid of this 2 here, you take the square root of both sides. So taking the square root, taking the square root. And whenever you take the square root of anything involving a variable that's squared, you always want to put a plus or minus. So this is plus or minus the square root of 3 eighths. Now we add 1 half to both sides. So we end up with x equals 1 half plus or minus the square root of 3 over 8. So that should be the final answer. Sometimes um, homework problems and stuff want you to simplify the answers more. Uh, in that case, you would want to break this up. So the square root of 3 over 8 is the same thing as the square root of 3 over the square root of 8, which is the square root of 3. And then to simplify the square root of 8, you ask yourself, what's the largest factor of 8 that's a perfect square. In other words, what's the largest factor of 8 that when you take its square root, you get a whole number, so 4. So you can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So this is the square root of 3 over 2 square root of 2. And then, if you wanted to get rid of the square root on the bottom, you could rationalize. So you could multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so you get the square root of 6. 2, 2, it's going to give us 2. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, so you get 2 times 2. It's ridiculous. <laughs> square root of 6 over 4. Lots of simplification. Is that necessary? It depends. It really depends if whatever you're using this for. Like if you're doing homework, sometimes homework problems want you to simplify. So this is 1 half plus or minus, and this is the square root of 6 over 4. And that is the final answer. Hope that made sense.